Hi Founder fans, Jason here. Today's founder is Thomas Mifflin. Now if the name Mifflin rings a bell, you might watch the TV show The Office where the company they work at is Dunder Mifflin. That is a very specific reference to Pennsylvania's favorite son, Thomas Mifflin. Now when the Revolutionary War breaks out, Thomas Mifflin is already an important merchant in Philadelphia and as such, he's sent to the First Continental Congress where he agrees with and signs the Continental Association that of course announces the boycott of British goods that leads up to the violence of the American Revolutionary War. When the war breaks out, Thomas Mifflin, who is still a Continental Congressman, is chosen as an original aide-de-camp to General Washington himself, and he joins him on the trip up to Boston to start the whole siege up there. Now, shortly after this, Thomas Mifflin is actually chosen as the first quartermaster general in the history of the United States of America. Now, Quartermaster General, he's really in charge of supplying the troops, getting them all the food and provisions that one might need to run an army. And with the exception of part of the summer of 1776, he holds this position for two years. Along the way, thank you much to his service in the New Jersey campaign, Thomas Mifflin is promoted to Major General in the Continental Army. Unfortunately, uh, there's some pointing fingers going on about what exactly is he doing with this? Is he stealing from the army? Where is all this going? Now, Mifflin seems to have been pretty much above board with everything he did. In fact, he asked for a trial and an investigation into his conduct to clear his own name because he knew he had done nothing wrong. Now, this never happens. It comes to a head and Mifflin actually does resign his position as a quartermaster general and a major general in the Continental Army. His position of quartermaster general is taken by Nathaniel Green, who famously does a fantastic job in all aspects of the war. Now, Mifflin isn't just cast aside. He actually returns and becomes a Continental Congressperson once again. Not only this, but he's also commissioned uh, for a brief time as part of the Board of War, which oversees George Washington and the Continental Army at large. So Mifflin does such a good job that he really earns the respects of the respect of his peers. In fact, he is so respected that in 1783 he is chosen as president of the Continental Congress. At this time, under the Articles of Confederation, historically we call it the Confederation Congress, but they called it the Continental Congress. Now, this is a lofty title, but that's pretty much all it was. The Continental Congress being president of it, you were not president of the United States. You were chairman of the board, essentially, and you were supposed to make sure the debates stayed pretty civil, and you sign all important documentation. And that is key because, well, the war ends about this time, and less than a month after he becomes president of the Continental Congress, well, General George Washington shows up to offer his resignation because the war is over. And Thomas Mifflin is probably most famous for being the person who accepts the resignation of General George Washington. Now, it was hard for them to get a quorum at the time, but just two months later, well, the Treaty of Paris was ratified or was approved and signed in Europe and sent over. And in early 1784, they had their hands on it. Here it is. We have the document that ends the war, once it gets back overseas, we're officially a country, baby. We did it. Unfortunately for Mifflin, it took him a very long time to get the necessary quorum of delegates from the different states to come ratify the document. Now, eventually Richard Barris Force shows up, they get their quorum, and they do, of course, ratify the Treaty of Paris. And when it's sent back to Europe, well, whose signature is on it? Thomas Mifflin. Thomas Mifflin is the one who signed the Treaty of Paris on behalf of the Continental Congress and with it the United States of America, making the United States officially an independent nation after all these years. Now, Mifflin wasn't done. Mifflin actually goes and uh, he goes back to Pennsylvania politics, not far away, but he goes back to Pennsylvania politics and he is uh, sent to Philadelphia, where he lives, not a big deal, to go to, I don't know, the Constitutional Convention, where he helps author the government of the United States of America and does sign the United States Constitution. Mifflin then is elected president 
of Pennsylvania. You see, under the first constitution, Pennsylvania's first constitution was a little strange, and everyone started to recognize it about this time. Mifflin was elected president of Pennsylvania, who soon then wrote a new constitution, which he oversaw the creation of Pennsylvania's second and one of its longer-lasting constitutions, uh, still technically in effect to this day. And after that was ratified, Mifflin became the first official governor of Pennsylvania, a position he held for the next decade throughout the 1790s, resigning just a month before his death in 1799, making him one of the most important Pennsylvania founders. That's a little bit about Thomas Mifflin. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like. Definitely subscribe for videos seven days a week about the American Revolution. I've started recommending books recently about the American founders, but Thomas Mifflin somehow does not have a biography that I could possibly find. Somehow, despite everything we just listed, Constitutional Convention, Washington Resignation, Treaty of Paris, Quartermaster Jet, just a humongous personality in the American founding does not have a biography. Uh, instead, I'm going to link to one of my favorite books, Plain Honest Men, which is about the summer of 1787 in Philadelphia. Instead of just about the Constitutional Convention, it's actually the kind of the whole city and, and what the delegates were doing both in and out of the Constitutional Convention. So I'm going to put a link, an Amazon affiliate link down in the description below. Check it out if you are so inclined. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow.